calling now. Please wait a moment. The person you're trying to reach is unavailable. Today we're going to take a look at the DB2X WP doorbell. This door station is IP65 rated, it's Wi-Fi, and has infrared. It does have an illuminated push button to call. We're going to take the back cover off for ease of use and take a look at the insides. You can see here's an RJ45 connection that can be PoE powered. It also can be powered 12 volt to 33 volt DC. It can support a 256 gig micro SD card for edge recording. It also allows you to leave video messages and it can also be paired up with the indoor monitor station and we'll take a look at that as well. It does have a tamper button in the back. When the doorbell is removed it will send you an alarm and also an alert to your phone if you have it paired up through DMSS app. The store station also has four inputs and also can be used to unlock electronic doors. The door station comes with two different mounting brackets. You can see on the back of the Villa station there's a cutout for the mounting tab and also a hole for a set screw at the bottom. The indoor mounting bracket you can see does not have a rain cover. It does have a hook where you can slide the door station onto the mount and slide it up in and then put the set screw. It does have cutouts for your cable and it also has an outdoor rain guard. Again it has the mounting holes and a cutout in the back and also in the bottom. It also has the mounting tab that the station will go in and slide down and hold it in place. And then you would put your set screw in the bottom to securely attach it. Keep in mind when you take the Villa station out, if it's powered up, the device alarm will activate and we'll look at that when we mount it onto the wall. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to remove the station that I have set up and replace it. Now you can see that I already have the Cat5 cable ran. It's going to supply power, so I won't be using the Wi-Fi for the doorbell. I'm going to use the indoor mount because I don't need the rain guard for this application. You can see when you remove the door station, the alarm sirens. Now we'll put our set screw back in the bottom and make it secure. Calling now. Please wait a moment. Now that we had a basic overview of the doorbell, we'll have to initialize the doorbell to get it up and running. There are several different ways to do this and we'll take a look at a couple of them. I do like to initialize and test the doorbell before I mount the doorbell where it's going to go to make sure everything is okay. To get started, I power up the doorbell either with 12 volt DC or with PoE. I also connect my computer to the same network. To start with, we'll take a look at the config tool. You can see I have selected uninitialize at the bottom, and my doorbell has already showed up in the list. You'll see that I check the doorbell, press initialize, and it will tell me that one has not been initialized. So I will press the initialize button, and then the password box will come up. We'll enter a new password and then confirm it. A side note while using this config tool, 
Once you change the password on a device, you have to go up into the search settings and set the password for the device you are looking for because it no longer uses the default password when searching. You also can enter an email address to be able to reset your password without having to factory default the device. I press next and now the doorbell is initialized. It is initialized with its default IP address of 192.168.1.108. I can bring up the web the browser and log in with the new username and password that we have set. When we go to the basic settings, you can see what you can change. You can name the device if you'd like. I'll just name it Backdoor. We're going to turn our auto capture on and we'll also select upload video messages. I don't have the door lock, so I'm going to leave that off. I'll press save. When we go to the video and audio settings, this is where we can change the resolution, the compression, etc. I'm going to change this to NTSC. I can adjust the image contrast and setting if I need to. I'm going to change the month, day, and year. I'll sync with my PC and I'll press save. What we'll do at this time, we'll change this IP address. Instead of the default 108, we'll change it to something that's available on the network. I'm going to select the cloud service to be able to put it onto my phone app and then I'll press save. After we have set our basic settings and changed our IP address, we log back in and we can continue on. We'll leave the WLAN at DHCP and let our router control. We turn our Wi-Fi on and it will scan and show us our available networks. At the present time, I'm connected to the PoE switch that is also connected to the network, so I do not need the Wi-Fi to be able to establish a connection. We can change the password. We can go back to the home that brings us to the main page. Again, we have our local settings where we started. We have our network settings that we were just in. Household settings if you have multiple VTOs or VTHs and we'll set the VTH up next. The VTH is a 7 inch touchscreen monitor that can use to answer the doorbell and have two-way communications. You don't need the VTH with the doorbell as this doorbell can be a standalone unit. What's nice about the 7 inch monitor you also can add your IP cameras and look at your cameras from the monitor as well. The VTH can be powered by PoE or by 12 volt. It also can be set up for wireless network connection. One way to keep track of the units, if you think the VTO as the outdoor unit and the VTH as the house unit, you can also add a micro SD card. This will allow people to leave messages when they ring the doorbell and nobody answers. As I said earlier in the video, there's several ways to initialize both of these units. The easiest way to initialize is to have them brand new, power them up, and connect them to the same network. And then we can initialize through the VTH or through the monitor. You can see here after we power them up, on the screen it lets you select what region that you are in. We'll select our region and we'll also select our language. We'll now select Villa as I'm setting it up as a house and a first time configuration and press OK. If both units are plugged into your router, you can select DHCP and press OK. 
and the router will set the IP address. The next step is set the VTH password which by default is 123456. You can then set your email address to be able to reset your password for the VTH. We'll press next and move on to step 3. In step 3 we'll add our password what we want it to be for our VTO. We'll set the password as well as our email address to be able to reset that as well. We'll press next and go to the next page. You can see that both units show uninitialized. The local is the VTH and the VTO is below that. We'll press initialize on both the VTH and the VTO. Once they complete, we'll press next. It'll assign the device info and then we'll press the one key configuration. This will take a little bit of time, just be patient until it completes. After the unit is configured, it'll restart and come to the main screen. The devices should be paired and the VTO should work when you press the button. If you have issues, you can try factory reset and, and try again. Calling now. Please wait a moment. Hello. The end of the call. Next we'll go through the settings. On the old units, you used to have to hold the settings button for 5 seconds and enter your password. With the newer units, you can press the settings, go into the project settings, and enter your default password of 123456. With the project setting, it allows you into the network side and the VTO side of your settings. Here you can see your network and your VTH configuration. You can see extension and main, and that would be if you had several of these VTH monitors throughout your house. You can see the SIP server is the same IP address of your VTO. Keep in mind the registration password for the VTO configuration is what we set when we first initialized the VTO. If you are manually initializing these units with a static IP address, take a look at that if you are troubleshooting as the password seems to change. You also can do a factory reset which sets everything and you can start over if you need to. If you press the settings button, this is where you can change the ringtone and the volume to the VTO and the VTH. On the other tab is where you adjust the VTO ring time and the VTH ring time. You may want to adjust these because 30 seconds seems to be a little bit long. You also can adjust the mic volume and the talk volume. If you scroll down you can see the WLAN. This will be your wireless network. You can turn it on. You can choose your network and then log in to be connected wirelessly. If I wanted to call up the VTO from the monitor, I could call 8001 as the default user number and it would call into the VTO. You can see at the top there's an icon for the VTO. If you're not connected or you have some settings incorrect, you'll have the VTO with an X on it at the top. You'll have to check your IP addresses and your passwords and once it's correct, the icon will go away and you'll reestablish a connection. Calling now. Please wait a moment. If you wanted to call the DMSS app, you could click on that. If you're having trouble setting up either one of these units, check your settings, check your connection, and factory default if needed, and start over. Thanks for watching the video.